Hey everybody, I'm Daryl Cagle and this is the Cagle Cast. We're all about political cartoons and today our topic is Fox News' Tucker Carlson. We've got cartoons about tanned testicles, Swanson TV dinners, Tucker's lies from the Dominion voting systems lawsuit discovery process, snuggling up to Putin and denying the violence on January 6th. We've got a cartoon Tucker Fest and we have three great cartoonists with us today. Our conservative cartoonist, Gary McCoy, draws two newspaper comic strips, The Flying McCoys and The Duplex, in addition to doing editorial cartoons for us and lots of other stuff. Ed Wexler is a brilliant caricaturist. He's worked for 30 years as creative director at Disney, and he did cartoons for 12 years for U.S. News and World Report. He's known for caricature cover art for the Hollywood Reporter Magazine's Academy Awards and Emmy Awards issues for 12 years as well. And Adam Ziglas is the Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist for the Buffalo News in New York. So we've got a great cast of cartoonists to comment on Tucker Carlson today. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here, Daryl. Well, we're going to start it off with one of your cartoons, Adam. And this is Tucker on the TV pointing the remote at the Fox News MAGA viewer with the words news programming. Fox News MAGA viewer is taking the instructions zombie-like from Tucker. This is how I think of Fox News. What's funny, I don't, I haven't drawn many sitting on the couch or a chair watching TV cartoons. And I feel like it's a, it's a device that a lot of cartoonists will, will go with and When you're commenting on watching TV, you can't get around doing the sitting on the couch watching TV cartoon. So I thought it was, this is actually speaking to my extended family a little bit. You know, just, I've lived with some people in my, in my orbit that have over the years um, been exposed to Fox nonstop in their homes and, and generally just in a way got kind of brainwashed in certain ways. And especially with the big lie here, I mean, this was like my opportunity to, to seize on this with the, with the Dominion lawsuit and the biggest thing about this that I wanted to capture was they denied, they didn't even believe in this lie and they were pushing it and mainly for ratings. But I knew doing this, I'd get, uh, I'd trigger a lot of Fox News viewers and I did. So I, uh, my inbox. Did you get a lot of response to this one? Oh, I did. I, yeah, I, I saw, this was, I, I knew I was going to get a good response and this one did not disappoint. Um, a lot of people were just screaming, what about, you know, now do one on MSNBC and CNN. But, you know, again, the point is on the big lie and the election being stolen. And that was the point that this was the channel and this was the mainly the commentator, uh, Tucker and, and amongst others that was really pushing the big lie. So. Well, I want to start off with one from each of you. This is from Gary McCoy, and it's got the Dems afraid in bed like uh, the dad is having a nightmare and the son's looking under the bed for a monster. And he s- says, it's OK, dad, there's no Tucker Carlson under your bed. So, uh Gary, tell mm-hmm. us about this one. You see uh, Democrats being afraid of Tucker Carlson. Yeah, I'm not the, the fastest drawer, but I, I did this just this afternoon real quick. I think this is the your only I, Tucker Carlson cartoon. It is. I just whipped it out so I could be in the podcast. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm always amazed at the, um, the, my, my friends on the left's obsession with Tucker. He's the highest rating cable news host. I know he says a lot of stuff that triggers people on the left. Uh, the main thing that really got him going lately has been the release of the January 6 videos. And I guess we'll talk about that more. But Yeah, uh, we'll have some cartoons on that. I, I've got the major Tucker topics of the last few years. Um, okay. You know, rather than being afraid of him, this is more how I think of Tucker. This is a thing that Ed did that went crazy viral on the internet, and I've seen it. It's unattributed to Ed. Uh, talk about this, Ed. One afternoon, I just made the connection in my mind that Tucker's expression was the same as Curly's, and with the internet so convenient, I just slapped this together and and posted it, and it, they really took off. It has. I I've seen this around. That's that's kind of crazy. Well, here is an excellent drawing that you did of Tucker, Ed. I think this is just great. Tucker's stepmother who adopted him was from the Swanson family of frozen food fame in the 50s and TV dinners. I was very fond of TV dinners in the 60s. I loved him. I loved him. I I did too. What dessert came with a, a muffin or something like that. Oh, tater tots it had. Anyway, this is great. 
Well, thanks. It was fun doing this one, actually. And I, I didn't know that he was adopted until just recently. I didn't know it either till just now. Yeah. Well, and the Swanson connection too. That's I didn't. Well, his his father, who was a famous journalist, uh, married the woman from the Swanson family. Who I think it's very nice and admirable that she adopted Tucker. Uh, so it's all very nice. I I haven't read any bad news about him having the Swanson connection. And you know, some people accuse him of getting a big inheritance, but I also don't know that that's true. I haven't read anything about that. But it's just fun because it's TV dinners. Tell us about this one, Ed. This is looking like the copper tone ads for suntan lotion is Tucker. And it says Tucker tone testicle tanning. You know, Tucker did a big special on Fox where he's talking about men not being macho anymore and how we need to be alpha males because that's what makes society work. And we've got all these girly men that are making society go down the tubes. And one of the things that he brought up was how cavemen were out in the sun and their testicles got sunshine. Now men, these girly men, whether they have testicles or not, they're not getting sunshine on their testicles. And if they did, that would make a big difference to their manliness. It was just absolutely craziness. And we got a bunch of cartoons on it. And I'm going to show them to you. But this one is yours, Ed, and you have a story behind it. Yeah, this one is mine, but it's my cartoon, but it's Steve Sank's idea had just had some surgery on his hand and wasn't able to draw, but he liked the idea and uh, gave it to me. Uh, you can see my little thanks, Steve Sack in the lower left hand corner. Yeah. He sent me, he was able, he was able to do a rough thumbnail and I went and finished the cartoon. You see that the dog is looking at the testicles too. I, <laughs> I just noticed that. What a real reaction to how cool it was to, Finish a Steve Stack concept. That it was, was very amazing. cool. What an honor. What a, what a great. Yeah. yeah, isn't that fun? Yeah. I have a little group of testicle cartoons here about Tucker. And we got two businessmen walking along in a Bob Englehart cartoon. And one of them says, I had my balls tanned and I still hate Trump. Uh, Dave Granlin draws a pair of tweezers in a magnifying glass. His parts are covered. And he says, you don't believe that testicular tanning works? Here, yeah. look for yourself. I think that's funny. <laughs> It can only work one way with a guy. If it was a woman talking about something anatomy related, you know, we'd all be misogynists, right? So I like how guys can laugh and have fun. Also, the way Putin is bros with Tucker, they both talk a lot about the girly men and how we need more macho men. And they're both very LGBTQ intolerant. I mean, um, that's part about, about Putin and Tucker being bros. That's interesting. Oh, Darryl. boy. Uh, here is Tucker in bed with two of the M&M characters uh, flipping the status quo. The, the M&M characters are pushing him out of bed. It's interesting to me, the obsession on Fox News with these M&M characters. They are just so sex obsessed and they put their sex obsession onto all kinds of things like the M&M's characters. That's something I find funny about conservatives. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm like the... The, the Fox guy here. And I don't remember seeing hardly any coverage at all about that. You don't remember how they were talking to wall to wall about the M&Ms? No, I think it may have come up on, you know, maybe some of their shows, but, um, but not, I mean, not to the extent that you're portraying it, I guess, again, we talked about this in the podcast we did with uh, me and Rivers, how both sides kind of live in their own bubbles. And whenever I flip over, to MSNBC or CNN, I see them waxing relentlessly about Trump and January 6th. And, you know, we're two years into the disastrous Biden administration and the economy tanking and war and immigration. And so uh, I guess you have to go switch over to Fox and see m and segments to kind of get away from that. Well, okay. I mean, Tucker, Tucker's playing those a uh... Footage from from the January sixth. I mean, it's it's going both sides. Everyone, it's a big, it's an insurrection. I mean, we should be talking about it. That uh, Trump Wait. is running for president again. I think that's relevant. I'm just but getting you into the Tucker Tucker racist cartoons. We'll get to the insurrection <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> the so insurrection that wasn't. Here's... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Daryl. Go ahead. No, here's Tucker, and he's got two uh, laughing black folks behind him from New Orleans and Flint, Michigan. And Tucker says, East Palestine is being neglected because they're white. It's a woke joke. 
And this is drawn by our own Adam Ziegler. Talk about this, Adam. Yeah, I love uh, cartoons that can kind of twist the narrative or give you a different perspective on the topic and combine an issue from the past with the current one. And my first reaction to Fox News and the, the whole bringing in um, the fact that they're white with these Palestinians, like that, that some reason the Biden administration was punishing or Buttigieg was punishing the population because they weren't Biden voters, that they were somehow Trump voters, so they were being slow to respond, was so absurd. And my mind instantly went to previous natural disasters where the government was very slow to respond, and the, the people that suffered the most were poor African-American communities, uh, like in Flint, Michigan, the water crisis, the water crisis, and most famously New Orleans, um, you know, with Katrina. So I thought, I love the cartoons that can kind of put several layers of opinion in there. And this, I touched a nerve and I got quite a bit of feedback on it. I put a few of the uh, Tucker racist ones together. I uh, hear the pilgrims coming on, on the Mayflower and the Indian the saying to the other Indian, he asked me if I had heard about great replacement theory. Tucker is very big on replacement theory. He talks um, about he does. And, uh, you know, that's, that's been one of the main uh, talking points of white supremacist groups for many you've decades. Got, sorry. And then you've got Chuck Schumer actually uh, touting that, you know, it, it's their plan. That reason they all how, the good thing about all this illegal immigration is that it's going to uh, change the voting rules and kind of shoots down the defense of their replacement theory conspiracy. At the aim at Tucker. Well, just the term replacement theory has such a history. You know, uh, the, at the white supremacist rallies, they carry their torches and they shout, uh, you will not replace us. He places himself with a group as he chooses the jargon of that group. And Robert, that's really Robert pretty Bird ugly. Was, Robert Byrd was probably at some of those rallies, I guess. You, you <laughs> like the whataboutism. Hey, you know, the, that's the thing. The whataboutism is always brought up from the left, except when they use it, it's never a factor. So, yeah, well, I guess as cartoonists, we use it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's uh, Pat Bagley on his replacement theory. <laughs> uh, he's got the Fox News TV replacing the, the MAGA guy with uh, uh, the poo-poo emoji and taking out his brain. I think that's pretty funny. Here's uh, Bob Englehart again, uh, Tucker with the hate and racism hair goop. Tucker has very impressive hair. Here's another replacement theory one. Fox News will not air January 6th hearings. And it was amazing because I watch this channel on TV that shows all the news channels at once. And I flip between them and I see very graphically the difference between all the other channels and Fox News. And it was just amazing to see the same view of all the January 6th hearings except on Fox where they're talking about the border or something. Very interesting contrast. So he's got an ostrich and fox with his head in the ground instead of the ostrich. The ostrich says, oh, I thought you'd want to show that the whole thing was a hoax and that mob was all Antifa. And fox with the head in the ground says, Tucker needs time to talk about replacement theory and testicle tanning. All right, gentlemen, I'm moving on to Tucker and Vladimir Putin being bros. So here's, uh, here's another Bagley cartoon. And they're watching Vladimir with Tucker the puppet. and. That people in the audience are saying it's amazing. You can barely see his lips move. The Vlad and Tuck show. What do you think about Tucker and Putin? That, that I like this cartoon. This is, I, I haven't seen this one before. Yeah, there's a lot of great movement. Pat's cartoons, you know, he really spends a lot of time making them look quick. It's almost like a lot of effort to make them look fast. And they're just it's great movement to him. And it's just so, hard to, to make it look like he drew it quick, you know, like in yeah. a really successful way. Yeah, um, he's yeah. Got, he's got a great style. It's a very really fresh composition. It is. And he draws on an iPad in Procreate. And he uses the... You. He uses yeah, he's the, a great artist. The, the pencil tool in Procreate okay. that looks like he's drawing with a big... A carpenter's pencil. Yeah, the texture. Yes. I, I switched to Procreate for color like about six months ago. And I really like it. The I, Apple Pencil is fantastic. Makes things really easy. You, you, you draw on paper, don't you, Adam? Yeah, my lines are hand drawn. Scan them uh, two ways: once in black and white for the newspaper, and like in bitmap format, and then another way, just color lines, and then I layer in the the color on Procreate. I love Procreate for sketching. Yeah, it's cool. So here, here's another uh, Putin cartoon by uh, J.D. Crow in Alabama. 
He's got uh, the Tucker Carlson puppet. No, you're a Putin propaganda tool, he says. And here is a woman cartoon, another Putin puppet. When Tucker Carlson repeats Russian talking points, sometimes you can see Putin's lips move. Tucker says, why is it disloyal to side with Russia? Why can't Russia invade Ukraine? Why do we even have NATO? Putin says, nice job, Tommy. Um, that's another Fox News thing. It's always the why this, why that, why, uh, why, why, why. So I'm waiting for the opportunity to rebut some of these premises, Daryl. Well, you can pop in, Gary. Rebut. Well, we're, we're on Putin and, and Tucker okay. as his puppet. What, so, what you got? So Tucker, you know, what he says is what most conservatives agree with, which is why should we be depleting our military? Why should we be furthering the debt piled on our children and grandchildren? Why should we be so concerned about Ukraine's borders while allowing illegal immigrants to pour across our borders? Why is that pro-Russia? Why is that pro-Putin at all? Because those are things that I care about, and I'm not pro-Putin. I think Putin deserves, you know, to be thrown in the Hague. I, I, I'm not anything near pro-Putin, but I have a 13-year-old son. I care about his future. I care about us tampering with World War III, Putin. If everybody believes that Putin is the madman that he is, then why, why try to provoke him into nuking Ukraine? I mean, there's over 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers that have died and civilians, and there's no talk about peace talks. Uh, in fact, I think the United States thwarted earlier attempts at peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. So what, don't we want peace? Don't we want this to end? But it's like suddenly the left has become the, uh, the neocons. They're, they're the ones that are seem to be craving longer, prolonged war with Russia. See, I don't think but, that's I don't think that's accurate. I think most people on the left don't want war either. I see what you're saying. And more people would agree with you on the left than you think about not wanting to escalate war and being concerned about at home. And I haven't heard that nuanced argument from Fox or from Tucker. Hey, Putin is wrong and we should be speaking out against him forcefully. They don't do that. He says and it all the time. Like, he I'm sorry, I mean, Adam. He says it all the time. He always says I'm I'm not pro Putin. I'm not far Putin, but no, I mean, he, he, I, he's, he's been, he likes Putin. He's, he's, no, he's, no, he doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't like him. What has he ever said that is explicitly, uh, that could be interpreted as him liking Putin? Oh, when I watch I mean, him talk on the topic, he sounds very, very explicit. Yeah. You know, when he, he repeats some of the arguments that Russia makes, such as when they were going to war and the arguments that were coming out of Russia, some of the, the clips he was replaying were coming straight from the propaganda machine in Russia. I mean, I could find you a clip. When I was taking this to Shuan, I, I tried to tune in and I tried to find certain clips and it was just, it was alarming that it was almost like they were coming straight from Russia in terms of the arguments or the, some of the things he was saying or some of the clips he was showing. So it is odd. Like if he really just cared about America, he would actually speak forcefully against Putin and, and it's, this insanely horrible war and all the people being killed, but then, you know, um, have a nuanced argument, but I haven't heard that. I think, I think he well, stands out among the Republicans as well for being so pro Putin because it's, it's a minority of Republicans that, no, that feel no, that it's way. Not, it's, it's, there's, there's too many Republican, uh, congressmen, uh, that are, and senators that are for this war. There, they've, there's so many, so many neocons that are wanting this war to just go on forever. I mean, this talk that makes me sick when Biden says Ukraine will decide when this war is over. I mean, what the hell are we talking about? This is our money. Why, why does Vladimir Zelensky get to dictate our foreign policy? And when we can cut off the funds that are bankrupting our children, why does this guy who's shutting down Russian Orthodox churches and throwing monks from monasteries in jail, why does he get to dictate and say when we'll stop supporting his country? I mean, it's not, the American people don't even have a say so. Biden has explicitly said that. It's not up to us. It's up to Zelensky to decide. And this is our money that we're paying. This is our money that's funding this, you know, billions of dollars when we're paying, what, $10 for a dozen eggs in this country, and we're letting illegal immigrants pour across our border, killing Americans with and all. 
And we're, we're okay with that. Our borders don't matter, but Ukraine's borders are sovereign and sanctuary. Uh, but if we want, if, you know, if we don't want to get involved in a foreign conflict, we really don't have a say in when the war ends. So, I mean, you can't have it both ways. If you want to be yeah. America first isolationist, you can't be upset when Biden's saying, you know, it's up to Ukraine when this war is over. I, I, it's our money. Yeah, we, we can. We can you, be a- you can decide what we invest, but the war could still go on. Whether You look at all the money we've spent building up an arsenal against Russia over the years versus the money we're spending on this. This is like the best investment in taking Russia down ever. Uh, Much better than building up an arsenal. This is very effective. It's not. No, it's not. Have you heard that Russia's actually winning this war? That they're actually, they actually have the upper hand, but you don't hear that through much of the media. I mean, Ukraine is doing so well. And how come we keep having to pump more and more military hardware and weaponry into the country? This is not going to end well for anyone. We should be taking an approach of peace negotiations as soon as we can get them, especially since we're the ones funding this uh, largely. Well, I'm, I'm all for supporting Ukraine, and I think it's very effective use of money. I'm happy about it. It's fighting authoritarianism from spreading. Yeah, defending a direct threat to NATO. At what cost? Nuclear World War III? I mean... Look at China. Look what China's doing in the South China Sea, building airstrips, provoking, going to start war with uh, Taiwan, probably imminently, you know, maybe this year. We're stretched so thin. We're sending all this stuff to Ukraine. And I hear that our own supplies are being depleted. Well, we've got so much Tucker to go through. Here's another one from Adam Ziegler with the Putin and <laughs> Russian dressing, dressing up Tucker as the minister of U.S. propaganda. They, they do talk on RT about uh, how uh, Tucker's their favorite guy and he's the only one in America that's got it right. It's, it's interesting. Here's a Steve Sack one that's a little bit earlier because Tucker has been a, a Putin guy along with Trump for many years. And I miss Steve Sack. We've got uh, Tucker Carlson as a parrot on the Putin's shoulder. He says, oh, Putin isn't the enemy. Why is it disloyal to side with Russia? And Putin says, he's good, Peredit. I give him cracker. I think that's cute. Thank you. Dude, you do a great Russian accent. The voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's McCarthy. A couple of Congress people looking at him. He's got a spatula in his hand instead of gavel. One says, what's with the spatula? And lady says, he gave his gavel to Tucker Carlson. Here he is with his Fox News gavel from Matt's in a roll call. Here's another Wyman cartoon with McCarthy feeding all the January 6th footage to a very hungry Tucker Carlson. You wanted to talk about January 6th and the Fox News Tucker Carlson argument that it was peaceful and not an insurrection. So go for it, Gary. Okay. Well, I'm going to just, I sent you some images. You don't have to show them, but I, I've got them up on my screen. So I'll just kind of run through these real, just some statistics. This is from the DOJ, our own Department of Justice numbers. 950 total crimes out of, I don't know how many people were there. I think the number is in the hundreds of thousands, couple hundred thousand maybe. Let's go right to the insurrection. Convictions of insurrection number out of the total 150 crimes, that would be, let's see, from our own DOJ, uh, that would be zero. Zero insurrections out of the January 6th insurrection. Then there's numbers of violent, is, impeding reasons. Wait, is your point that because the prosecutions haven't been more robust that these things didn't happen? They've been robust. They, they've got people locked up. There's been 284 charges of violence, impeding, resisting, assaulting, entering the Capitol out of the total 950 total crimes. Entering, entering the Capitol is 860 of that. So people so are walking your, through the Capitol. What's your, so my, my, my point is the, in, the word insurrection has been probably the most commonly used politically charged word in the last two years. Mm-hmm. And there's no charges of insurrection. So that just kind of like blows that out of the water. It's a legal well, term do you versus think a, yeah. if, if it was an insurrection, then there would be an insurrection charge. Wouldn't you all agree? No. Our own DOG. Our no. own DOG. Well, then, then why don't we call it a, a bunny hop? Because well, do you no think it's just hop. a coincidence that the 
protests pushing into the Capitol happened at the time that they were counting the electoral college votes? It wasn't an insurrection. Our own DOJ says it wasn't. They would have charged them. Well, they'll do whatever is easy, and they're going easy on everybody. And, and, and uh, doing Mike Pence and bring a, bring a noose over there and try to find Mike Pence, like, at all. The, we we just watched the, what happened. Gosh. You know, we all were there watching it. I mean, you don't have it to was, do it. But, okay, conspiracy, 50, char- 50 charges out of the 950. There were people, you threw a water bottle, you were charged with having, with having a weapon, a flagpole. A water bottle. Okay, 99 out of the 950, 99 of the charges were violent. Gerald, I would love to see more of them prosecuted. Gerald, they, they, that's totally. not evidence that this was no insurrection. They, the fact that the they were charge. trying they, to disrupt a government proceeding is the definition of insurrection. No, they weren't. And you that's, know that's, that's true thing. because it was no. timed Gerald. to coincide with this. And what was it and for, have, Gary? What was the point of it? What, if they weren't you, trying to overturn their election results, what were they doing? Were they there, there were people at suckers? Yeah. There was people. Plus, we there's were plenty of evidence of guys, emails landing this, deciding the purpose of trying to disrupt the count of the Electoral College. Did, did you guys like actually watch was, Tucker's? Okay, why did the media, why did the, the Democrats fight tooth and nail to keep the videos from being seen? Why, was, why do you make all these why con- concepts? Why don't you make a, an assertive statement? You know, they like should all be in, in jail. I'd like to see many of them in jail. 140 policemen injured on that day. There should be a ton of people in jail that are not in jail. There are people in jail that haven't been charged, that haven't even had trial. They've been sitting in jail, wasting away for walking through the Capitol. There's a guy who walked. These are, this is the thing. You guys don't want the video shown because it's actually shown what happened. Why else would you not want People to see I've the seen actual the videos. Video. They're just clips. They're clips. We've we've watched well, because I, we watched that, it as it happened. I don't. That's all the gen- new videos. No, the videos the are videos, not going to do anything. There's thousands of hours of video that were not shown. Oh, in between moments. The tuck, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's all the January. A lot of content clips. clips. The gen- yeah, there's same. a lot of hallways there. A January lot of people six. taking a, a nice Sunday stroll somewhere January. in the capital that have nothing to do with what's going on. That, that doesn't prove anything. It just lets you say why. The January 6th committee was all just clips as well. There's a guy shown in the video. He was in the Capitol. He walked in. There's a clock showing how long he was. He walked in. Walked You're talking in about the shaman bit. character? No, no. We'll get to him later. A guy walked in, had a MAGA hat. A Capitol Hill cop told him to leave. He turned around, walked out. The clock ran while he was in the Capitol. He was in the Capitol for less than, I think, a minute and a half. He's charged. He's looking at like a year in jail for that less than one minute, walking in, turning around and walking out. You got to be kidding me. And Daryl, you don't think they're they're charging these people are going after them hard enough? I think the numbers yeah. I showed you that people are locked up or people are being charged for like walking in the Capitol and taking pictures. That's what it was. Thousands they of broke people. into the Capitol. No, no he, didn't, he didn't. He didn't break in. He walked in. He walked okay. in. They, as a group, as a mob. I mean, people, say. okay. He was let, part of a group. We'll establish that there were violence. There Gary, were, you was, were there counting were, through those numbers as though those numbers were low to make the point that these things didn't happen because the prosecutions are low. No, I said the pe- that they happened. Hundreds the is a lot. Crimes, <laughs> the total crimes out of 950, you've got violent weapons or serious injury, 99 out of 950, that's people that could have had a flagpole or swung a flagpole or threw a water bottle. That's a violent weapon or serious injury charge for January 6th. Look, you We're can fire the thing, cases. Sure. You make things weapon. You oh, you mean the, the one that supposedly uh, Brian Sitnik supposedly died from, which he didn't? That was all over the news. CNN reported it. MSNBC reported it. That uh, Capitol Hill police officer killed. Anderson Cooper said he died from being hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. That was a lie. That was a flat out lie. And that stuff went on for months on, on the left. Uh, what he was killed by, how does it make a difference between whether it's an insurrection or how is this? How, how is that? Any of that point. I'm talking about the point. lies. I'm talking about the lies that were spread about this and, and insurrection. Well, again, I think broadcast, you, you can broadcast call, media jumps to a story and they want to, they want to be first with it. It, it. it turns out they're wrong. Oh, and that happens. And they, well, it happens a lot. That's why I don't rely on TV news when it's live and breaking and read newspapers. Been on the left and the right, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post. 
Uh, you can't believe what you're watching from Tucker or for anybody on, on broadcast until you verify it, in my opinion. Well, I'll go along with that. You're, you're right. Um, I guess, again, the point I wanted to make was, is just that the whole thing was billed as something. I think it was overblown. There, were, there was violence there. There was a murder that day. It was a Trump supporter. There were cops assaulted. And I believe every single one of those should be prosecuted and tried to the fullest extent of the law. I agree. But I think people walking in that were later tracked down at their homes that walked in and took a picture and, and turned around and walked out like this guy who I just uh, told you guys about. I think that's a little bit of excessive and it just makes you wonder, not everybody was there to overthrow the election. There were people there because they were at a rally. They were upset. Speaking of the QAnon shaman, there's video. They all knew it was, it was time to coincide with trying to disrupt the count of the electoral college. But but if you're in there, that that was the purpose. You knew what you're doing when you're inside the Capitol. I mean, imagine if you're arrested, your friend's arrested for shoplifting. And you're right there with them without, you know, you broke, you went into the place, you broke in with them, but you didn't actually take anything, but you're part of the group. I mean, they knew what they were doing. But it was very gonna... clear that the police didn't want them to come in. They knew what they were doing. They're coming in because Darryl. they had the legitimacy of a crowd and the, their Time president. For a tour. Right. <laughs> there's like, there's like, there's, there's like nine Capitol Hill policemen standing there. And then a QAnon shaman goes into the Capitol, the Senate chamber, and he says a prayer. QAnon shaman is being escorted down and down the halls. And then he goes into the Capitol, the Senate chamber, and he says a prayer for the Capitol Hill policemen. Okay, this evil insurrectionist. And then he's outside. He's out. He's outside. Well, I mean, he's, how violent. I mean, what the whole thing? He's I saw outside. Tucker Carlson bring the QAnon shaman's family on and uh, do all of this sympathetic to QAnon shaman stuff and how he was treated so badly. And he was just walking around. Look, he's talking to the policeman very nicely. That's how policemen are trying to deal with people, or they can. I mean, uh, you Darryl, don't want to shoot went, him just because he's there and not attacking you. It makes they, sense. They shot Ashley um, Babbitt. They and of, Ashley of course, they're not attacking anyone. The QAnon shaman. Well, Ashley I've, Babbitt you know, that, been in there. You don't, you don't kill somebody, a veteran of the United States Army, a female, an unarmed woman. You don't murder someone Gary, in blood. I, I, I in hate seeing anybody killed. I hate seeing Ashley Babbitt killed. I would much rather see her safe and alive and in prison now. Please, okay, no. I would too. Not, not dead. There, there's, cert, there's reasons when an officer can use deadly violence. You have to, your life or someone else's life has to be at risk. Oh, she imagine, if this group, imagine if this Darryl, group was people was of not color. You know? but, but, right. well, but she wasn't putting anybody, I'm sorry, she wasn't putting anybody's life at risk. She didn't deserve to be murdered. She, she was unarmed. She wasn't in any immediate threat. She wasn't in proximity. Well, the perception that was that there was a huge crowd behind her breaking through right. the door. Right. And he was protecting against you, the huge crowd and not paying attention to the fact that he's shooting one little woman. Well, and, that, that, uh, you, when you're holding a, vi- a, a deadly weapon, you're supposed to be better than that. This, the same guy left one of his guns, I think, in a restroom. The Capitol Hill policeman who shot and killed Ashley Babbitt left. He, he, had a, he was written up for leaving a, a loaded gun, I guess, in a restroom, maybe in the Capitol or somewhere. But it's on his record. But you don't hear sure. about that. But yeah, but that, like, that, let that me shows, make a point here. That's, that's negligent. But imagine, imagine a crowd like that coming in and storming in. Versus an individual in a car, a person of color that ends up dying. I mean, a part of why I think these people aren't prosecuted worse, maybe could be white privilege even. I mean, imagine if these were all people of color breaking in the Capitol building. You think they would have like be escorting them and holding their hands as they walk through the halls? I mean, you're right. And it was negligent and maybe it wasn't the right call. But it's also it's hard to criticize people when they're being stormed by a mob of, of people. That's a, that's so, a hard call. So, uh, oh, I you, mean, so in that situation, uh, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't want to do that, though. We all were hurt. It was all hurt. to defend the barrier. In the jail cell. I get it. He a was dead, not supposed a, to let them get through the door. That was his job. I, it's not his job to kill a woman. Daryl. That's a tragedy. It, it is. It is. Wants I, to see that. It, Nobody wants it, to see it. It's not white privilege either for a, a white woman, ex-veteran to get, uh, a veteran to get killed, shot in the neck. If, you're, if your concern is that, well, if she comes through, then everybody behind her is going to come through, then you deal with the situation at that time when if she breaches the door, 
comes through, then you're totally, you know, in your right to shoot her if you feel like your life is threatened. Not through a window that she's just climbing up a door on the other side. Anyway, um, but. Oh, okay. Look. Well, let's get, we've, <laughs> we're not going to get through the cartoons if we keep arguing about this stuff. So here <laughs> okay. is uh, Tucker Carlson and he's holding his angry Tucker Carlson mask and his, his knit brow mask. And he says, as you can clearly see in the security footage, Pearl Harbor was an attack. They were just peaceful Japanese tourists. What if they just wanted to take a Pearl Harbor tour? I'm just asking the questions. Tucker Carlson, he's just asking the questions, it says in the lower third. That's what I hear with your arguments and the Fox News arguments. The arguments are always why, 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 not actually assertive counter arguments, uh, just questions that are uh, here and there. Well, Daryl, I think it's relevant to ask why, 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 when what's wrong with showing the video of what happened? If you say, well, it's, it's not edited, it might be clips. You can't show 40,000 hours of video. But that's all January 6th committee did was show their clips. But they wanted to show the clips of the violent part. Tucker, everybody's. A I'm not interested in the uh, empty hall. I'm, I'm yeah, interested like, in the violent yeah. part. Right. Huh? That's what people. That was the correct, that's the crime. The violent part. That's it's, what I want to see. Right, but, if, but if you show hundreds of people just walking through the hall, taking pictures, picking up. What's the uh, point? In it? it shows that. It, sh it shoots down the narrative that this was all like a the violent part direction. They weren't just only walking through the hole. They were like, Nancy, Nancy, where are you? Nancy? Oh my gosh. They were riding on the walls with their feces. And Nancy's talking about, you know, she'd like to punch the president in the face and Joe Biden like to take him back. Behind. And everybody wonders why, you know, where do we get this violence? And uh, oh, no, Trump was never speaking of violence to reporters or. Well, and that's the whole thing. That was that. always. It was always Trump so violent, Trump so violent. Then you have Nancy Pelosi. Um, oh, what the hell? Yeah, you had just numerous Democrats, you know, saying Trump should be punched. Uh, guy from Montana. Um, what the hell? That's the what about argument. So here uh, is a cartoon by John Darko. Well, we haven't been saying what about. So here's the Do John Darko, and he's okay. Tucker Carlson. He's on the TV with his January 6th video investigation saying, who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes? That's how I see it. Here he is with his uh, sanitizer and blood stain remover by Dave Gran Granlund. I've got to skip the ones that have too many words in them. Here he is with his Fox News brainwash, moisturizer, lies. That's a pretty gooey looking brain on that, that uh, <laughs> mega TV watcher. Very wet. <laughs> yeah, that's a Dave Woman cartoon. Uh, here's uh, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, Fox News is not a mouthpiece for the Republican Party, he says, as he's inside the elephant's mouth. Here's Chris Wyant. He's got the principal at the school. He says, we've caught your son in a series of lies. We're concerned he's headed to a career on Fox News. And it's a classic. that is a classic, isn't it? <laughs> Should be our cover for this episode. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have gone through the cartoons. We've done the insurrection. We've done uh, testicle tanning. We've done Fox <laughs> News lies from the Dominion lawsuit discovery. We had a TV dinner. What more do we need to say about Tucker Carlson? Just glad you guys can't see below my waist. Right. <laughs> um, no, it's been fun. I have to go get some uh, Friday fish, but just want you guys to know that, um, you know, you guys are my friends, my colleagues, but we just have different opinions and that's what makes it fun, right? That's right. Well, good to see you. We love you, you Gary. Gary. You too, guys. Take care, and uh, it's fun. Can't wait to see you guys in person again. Any more last Tucker words? Are we out of here? No, it's been... Thanks, Daryl. Okay, see you later, Ed, Adam, Gary, and uh, remember to subscribe to the KegelCast wherever you're watching or listening today. Our KegelCast is available in both video and audio versions, so if you're just listening and don't see the cartoons, you can go to kegel.com or Apple Podcasts youtube or spotify to watch the video and i've just described the cartoons to those of you who were just listening and couldn't see them but it is so cool to see them so uh, go subscribe to the video and go see us on kegel.com and thank you so much for joining us and i will uh, see you on the next kegel cast thanks folks